If we are constantly telling ourselves, we gotta get better at this, we gotta heal this, we gotta, that means we're constantly saying we're not good enough right now. I just never want us to constantly be looking for ways to improve ourselves. It's important to take a break sometimes again and just let things settle in. Hi, hi, hi. As you can see, we are chilling today. We are sweats and little to no makeup, skin. I want today to feel lighthearted. In my everyday life, the one thing I've learned in my healing journey is that it is important to take breaks. And I want that to reflect on my channel as well. I don't always wanna be giving you guys like homework after homework after homework. Number one, because I hope that you are actually taking the things that I'm saying. I do see some of you say that you watch the videos multiple times and take notes and apply it and maybe come back. I hope that all of you are doing that because the things that we are talking about are not things that you can just listen to once, apply once, and then it's over. It's something that you have to continue to tell yourself to actually make it something that is second nature for you right so you know if we're getting serious lessons after serious lessons back to back to back while it feels good to hear because i know as i'm reading your comments you're like thank you for posting it and you're happy when you see me post videos back to back but sometimes life just makes me take a space in between videos but other times i think it's important to let some of these things just sink in so i say all of that to say while we are still talking about wellness and we're still talking about healing and cleansing and all those things it's going to be a little more lighthearted. i just never want us to constantly be looking for ways to improve ourselves it's important to take a break sometimes again and just let things settle in it's important to take a break and step back sometimes and just reset the times that I'm in my head the most, the times that I'm coming down on myself the most, you know, I'm overthinking. I'm overthinking what I want to do next in my career. I'm overthinking things that I need to do with Ev, like his schooling and, and the decisions that I'm making for him. And, you know, in my marriage, are we doing good enough? Are we dating enough? And looking at myself, am I taking care of my... It's like, you know what I'm talking about where you can just get in your head. And in those moments, I tend to put myself into like deep meditation. I'll take longer meditations and longer journaling sessions. And while that's cool, what breaks me out of it and what kind of gives me a great perspective is stepping out the house with my family, right? Just going to have lunch or, you know, heading to the mall or the park or just sitting downstairs and spending time with them. Sometimes just getting my mind off the thing and kind of stepping back into the present, physically moving my body, doing things, interacting, having conversations, getting my mind off of all the billion things that I want to increase or that I'm working on. It gives me perspective. It reminds me like there are good things happening right now. It helps me to, it helps me to realize that I don't want life to be that serious for me, not all the time. There are times where we absolutely have to be serious, but a big part of my mission is to remind people like life can be enjoyable, right? And so if we are constantly telling ourselves, we gotta get better at this, we gotta heal this, we gotta, that means we're constantly saying we're not good enough right now. And so taking a break, right? And resetting is super important. So this is a fun video for me because I love a good purge. Mm, I love a good cleansing out. My husband always comes upstairs and there's bags of clothes and things that I'm looking through and I'm just like, I don't need this anymore. He's like, how are you still getting rid of things? Because especially now in this stage, I'm just kind of like, I only want things around me that reflect who I am, where I'm going, that make me feel good, that are of good quality, that hold good energy, have good memories. And so it's easy for me to release and let go. We skipped our bevy of the day, so let me just get back to that. I know it looks like regular water, but it's Pellegrino or sparkling water. My son calls it spicy water. It's a tangerine strawberry Pellegrino. So we're keeping it fresh and light today. So tell me in the comments what your bevy of the day is. I wish in the beginning of my journey that I had someone that kind of walked me through what their, you know, spring routine or their like spiritual routine routine of cleansing, like if they felt stagnant or if they were in a moment of just wanting to reset, what those routines look like. For me, it was kind of all over the place. You had people that did way too much and I was just like, who does that all the time? And then I had people that I just felt like, I don't know, I just couldn't trust what they were doing. It seems like they were just doing whatever for the camera. And so I wanted to share some of my physical and spiritual cleansing routines that I come back to often. And although I'm sharing this as a spring routine, I'm not gonna lie, this is like my, anytime I'm feeling stagnant and I need a reset, these are the things that I turn to. But I like to be intentional about going from the cooler months into the warmer months and then the warmer months into the cooler months. So like a spring reset and then like a fall reset. 
I feel like you can feel those changes so drastically. Whereas going from spring to summer, it kind of eases in, right? Going from fall to winter, it kind of eases in. But going from summer to fall, you feel it, right? You feel it when it gets crispy and cold outside. And I think resetting and like, those are the times you like take your spring clothes and your summer clothes and you put them away and you bring your winter clothes to the forefront. You know what I mean? And then same in spring, when it goes from those cold months and then you start to see the trees blooming and the flowers and the weather starts to break and get a little warmer. It is a shift in your energy. It is a shift in your your world it feels so different and you know your your routine changes it's lighter outside longer it's just those two transitions are energetic you definitely feel them and so these practices go hand in hand to make sure that you're entering these seasons full and letting go of what was bringing along what still feels right and what you want to strengthen you don't have to use seasons as a time to let go but I think it just offers us a very definite moment right to reset and it just feels good. I don't know about y'all, but I love when, I mean, right now it's still like 40 degrees outside. Me and mother nature need to have a talk, okay? Because I am a March baby. My birthday just passed on March 22nd. I am a spring baby and I don't know the last time it's been really cold on my birthday. So I'm, I'm not feeling that part, but I'm still excited because it's still lighter outside longer and I know it's coming. Hence my tulips. I love my tulips. They just, they represent spring for me and they represent this change. I'm gonna go over some of the things I do physically to cleanse, like my home, my clothes and things like that. And then I'm gonna go into the more spiritual side of the things that I do. I always say I'm sharing from experience. Take what you need and leave what you don't. If it doesn't apply, replace it with something that applies to you. I hope that you never take any of these videos verbatim. When I say that, I mean, None of us are exactly the same, right? I know you guys can relate, but I hope that when something doesn't feel right for you, that you just say, hey, that's for Tiff and that's not for me. I'm gonna share my spiritual practices and I'm gonna share the things that make me feel lighter and make me feel more connected to God and make me feel like I'm cleansing my space and my energy. And I hope that a lot of you walk away with some new practices and some new routines to hold on to so that at any moment you're feeling stagnant, you can use these, but especially during these transitions into the new seasons. And of course, I'm pulling a card from my I'm Listening Self-Love Edition deck. This question today is how do I truly want my life to feel? Take a moment to describe it in detail. As you begin your mood board, as you begin cleansing your home and clearing out the clothes and, you know, cleaning your aura and your energy, as you begin to do that, pause for a second and really think about how you want your life to feel in comparison to how it's been. What things do you want to change? What things have been holding you back? What patterns have you been repeating that maybe you talked about last spring and here we are this spring and we're still doing it? How can we make a change? How can we really release something or make a change in ourselves that come fall or next spring we're like we actually put something in place to make those changes? I am a mood board girl. I think I told you guys this before. I love a good mood board. When I used to do regular photo shoots with outside photographers outside of my husband, I used to put together mood boards of what I want certain looks to look like, what I'm going for, the spaces I'm looking for, and it was just a fun thing for me to do. And so last year, I put together a fashion mood board, which I'll add here on the screen, of what I wanted my style to elevate to. And it was at the top of the year, so it was still cold, hence, the looks. What this did for me is as I moved into cleansing my closet and cleansing out, it was easier for me to let things go because I was like, this is not aligned with the style that I see for myself. This is not aligned with what I want to move into my life. This is not aligned with what I want to feel like or look like or Maybe the quality just wasn't there. I'm sharing this because I've had so many questions about you know, curating my aesthetic and we've talked about self-actualization and getting your physical to match how you feel inside. I think that's an important thing to do is to take how you feel and how you view yourself and be able to recreate that on the outside in a way that makes you feel really good. This is one of the ways that I do it is by creating a mood board, looking for images that really inspire me. So what I did for this season is I put together a spring mood board. Here on the spring mood board, you see that I have like my everyday, what I want to call like my mom, Aaron running around outfit. I love this because it's like a monochromatic. I love a good dad hat, number one. Let's start there. I love an oversized shirt. You guys know that. I'm in my New Balance era right now. I have so many and I love them. The most comfortable running around shoes ever. This just represents me because I love monochromatic and comfy, but still you got the earrings, you got the hat, the purse, and it kind of is still fashiony. And then you see homegirl in the middle just 
killing hair is flowing and this oversized jumpsuit another monochromatic moment but it just gives flowy it gives fashiony it just represents the look and the feel that i want for my spring just like natural and effortless but still fashionable and then my tulips already brought those to fruition you see the candles you see the incense the lemon flower brew up at the top i was trying to embody i know what i want my home to smell like i know what i want the vibe to be in my home which is just chill and like smell really good reflective of this of the season i threw this one together because i wanted to show you guys what i mean by putting together a mood board of what you want now you have to know in your world what motivates you right so when i close my eyes and i visualize i tell you guys all the time i can always see like what i'm wearing first what my hair looks like i can see what the environment looks like you know i usually can see like candles lit i'm a sensual person so like the look and feel and the energy of a place is what i see first and then everything else falls into place for me so when i'm thinking about a photo shoot it's looks and feels if I'm thinking about an event I'm doing, looks and feels. And then I work my way backwards and fill in all the details. That's how my brain works. I'm a visual girl. I'm a sensual girl. But you might work differently. Maybe on your mood board, it's the books you want to read. Maybe it's the restaurants you want to visit. Or maybe it's a trip you want to take or people you want to spend more time with. You know, where I'm at right now, I feel great in my relationships. I feel great in my family relationship, in my marriage. But a few years ago, my vision board for the year had me and my husband working on getting more eye to eye and more in harmony and it was more about like friendships and like strengthening those friendships and grateful to say that those things have come to fruition and I'm in a great space there so thinking about what's your motivation right now and what things have you been working on during the winter you know what I mean that now you want to see reap and come to reality and you want to see the fruits the fruits of your labor what things do you want to see bloom and come to life Focus on those things for yourself. What do you want this next chapter to feel like? Think about that and pull images. I did mine on Canva. Do the same for yourself. Have a mood board, have intentions. You can put words on there. Think about what you're working towards and put that on there. For me, I just want it to be luxurious, peaceful, effortless, and just surrounded by good things, good sense, good things to look at, good people. And so my mood board just helped me to as I go around my house and, I, and I'm putting flowers in different areas of my house and buying the candles, I kind of know what I want the feel to be. I'm gonna do my spring boil. I've never done a spring boil. I've done a fall boil where I've done cinnamon sticks, oranges, and I think vanilla, and it made my house smell so good. So I've never done a spring one. I wanna try the spring one with like lemon. I seen some flowers in there, but I have to get flowers I like because not all flowers are like great to me some are too flowery if that makes sense smell wise so now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty i know i've been talking i've been talking i've been going but let's start with the physical because that's the easiest part a huge part for me is cleansing my home getting a restart now as i cleanse my space what has become very important to me even before my son was born but even more like 10 times more once my son was born i've been big on you know, what I'm cleaning tables and surfaces with uh, our dishes. So I've been doing my best to find the cleanest products possible, becoming a little more conscious about using products that are biodegradable, that are recyclable, and not just sitting somewhere and piling up. So I've been a lot more conscious about using products that are good for us, that they are not causing our bodies harm, and that they are not causing the planet harm. One of my favorite things that I love when it comes to like products, whether it's body products or cleaning products, is a company that sends you refills rather than sending you a new bottle every time you order. So me and today's sponsor are like eye to eye when it comes to this, when it comes to what's going in our bodies and what's going out into the world. I've partnered with Blueland. If you know traditional dishwasher tablets, it's got the plastic around it and you put it in and it has to dissolve and then the powder comes out. Their tablets have no plastic. It's just the tablet. And until I seen their tablets, I'm like, why has it always had plastic? I don't, I don't understand why we needed that. And then that plastic gets onto our dishes and then it goes into the water system. It's just a whole thing. So everything is compostable or recyclable. And instead of receiving a new container each time, you get your container and you order your refills. Now you can do this on subscription or you can do one at a time. When you are buying the healthier products, it can be way more expensive. Blue Land is still cost effective. 
the refills start at like 225. Now these products have definitely become a go-to because I love the fact that you don't need a rinse agent to go with it. You're not worried about all these spots and things all over your plate. So they're also hypoallergenic and sourced from vegan ingredients. Blue Land also uses no single use plastic in any of their products, not in the product, not in the containers or anything. And so of course, if you wanna try them out, you will get a discount. If you click the link below, you'll get 15% off your first Blue Land kit. I definitely recommend you trying them out if you are looking for naturally derived products that are good for the planet, good for your body, safe to be used for kids and pets. They have all sorts of other products. They have laundry tablets, which I'm going to try next. They have cleaning products and hand wash. They have so many things you can try. Click the link below and I hope you do like it as much as I do. So also making sure that the scents of what I'm cleaning with kind of match the season is a big thing for me. Getting things like lemon around this time, lemons and oranges that are more bright and airy and give you the feeling of fruits and um, I don't know, does that make sense? Maybe even the more floral scents around your house just to bring in and usher in that, that, that spring feel are super important to me. Your candles, the sense of your candles being intentional about that. It's something so cool and like grown for me about matching, you know, the scents with the season. It really does put you in a different mood. This is the regular part of spring cleaning, cleansing out your home, getting rid of clutter, getting rid of anything that no longer belongs, things that have been sitting around. Like I know you have the thing, for me it's my dining room table because as soon as you come in, this is the place where mail gets dropped off and you know, if, if I have something in my hand forever, I drop it on the table and we can go weeks, months with having something just sitting here that'll just get shifted back and forth. Think of those things that you keep seeing as you walk around, the things that keep bugging you. Finding a way to take that mental weight of continually every day just working yourself up over it think of a way that you can cleanse that that you can take that weight off of your shoulder and find a space for that so that now when you walk in it is a new energy okay so we're looking around we're cleansing we're finding spaces again you can do this where you can go all out you can go to the container store you can go on amazon you can find containers or you can go to dollar tree and just find cute little ways and nooks of putting things away just to shift that energy and make you feel better in your own space right so i don't typically do i know people sometimes do a cleansing in one day i don't do my spring cleaning in one day i'm i give myself about a week or more because i like to do a full cleansing and a full cleansing looks like cleaning my home it looks like then cleaning out my clothes right it looks like also reevaluating relationships right now just reevaluating going into this next season what am i feeling like what have i been carrying do i need to create space do i need to let some people go do i need to set boundaries this is all heavy stuff like getting rid of your things and cleaning and using your brain work to organize it's heavy stuff and then we didn't even get into the spiritual part of it which is just sitting with yourself and meditating and journaling out all the things it takes time and you should give yourself time now we move on to our clothes again this mood board helps me because it's it's an idea of where i'm going where i'm at right now and i can look at the clothes and get a feel if this is something i haven't worn in the past few years it needs to be taken out and i need to look at it and i need to reevaluate if that's something i want if it's something that i got just for a um a theme party or something like that, I usually take it out. Now you can take things out and reevaluate them and maybe it's something that you do like. You can always put it back, but I think questioning the things that have been sitting there, things that were bought on a whim, maybe the quality is not great, maybe it doesn't fit you well. You can like the piece or the idea of it, but it doesn't fit you well and every time you put it on or every time you look at it, you think of how it fits and you don't like it, but we hold on to it and I don't know why. That is holding on to energy and we don't even realize it. Like we're playing the same movie back in our head over and over and over when we see something that doesn't make us feel good but we leave it there we just rather not deal with it and we leave it we do that a lot we do that with our clothes we do that with things in our home so as we're going through let's take out anything that is not screaming yes now this can get hard because some things have sentimental value the best piece of advice that i can give you right now and this is something i did years ago and now i've been like revamping i haven't done a full version of this in a while but the marie kondo book the art of tidying up that was a game changer for me she has you take all your clothes out from everywhere and then you go through one by one and you touch it and do you get a good feel from it and if you get a good feel from it it can stay if you love it it can stay but if you don't and if you're in eh about it it goes and then you have a maybe pile and i think you have a sentimental pile but for your home you want to keep the things that you are going to wear the things that reflect you and if you don't have clothes that reflect you and clothes that make you feel good then i suggest working on your mood board work on pulling images of 
I really suggest finding people with your body type and starting to try those styles out if you don't know what your style is. And then you curate your closet around that and you don't keep anything that makes you feel bad. And believe it or not, you can have a closet full of clothes that you love. You just have to be intentional about it. And that means not buying the cheapest thing on the rack because a lot of times low quality is what's not going to fit you well. Investing in pieces that you really, really like because they'll last longer and you can wear them in multiple ways, right? So when I say investing, investing in a good pair of jeans, investing in good t-shirts that are going to last, that fit you well, that you can wear in multiple different ways. So you're not buying 10 pieces, right? You don't have to buy 10 pieces. You can buy this one that's just really good quality. I really suggest getting the Marie Kondo book if you have not done a deep cleaning of your clothes and if you are in the space where you feel lost about what clothes to keep and what to let go of. The Marie Kondo method really helped me in my whole house to just cleanse. Me and my husband both did it. We took all our clothes out, socks, drawers, everything included. But if you're in a good space and you feel like you can just pull out the pieces and be honest with yourself, this is something I haven't worn. It's, I'm probably not gonna wear it. Cleanse out and make sure that when you walk up to your closet, you love what you see. And if you can find a way to start to buy pieces that feel good for you instead of buying the quickest piece, the cheapest piece, the trendiest piece, buy things that reflect who you are or who you want to show up as. And so now moving into the spiritual part, which is like my favorite part. I briefly touched before on journaling, but you are going to do a spring cleaning journal sesh. Now we are always journaling. I'm always talking about journaling, but this time you're just gonna let yourself go. You're gonna ramble, you're gonna talk, you're gonna think about all the BS that you had to deal with during the fall and the winter or all the good the end. And because sometimes there's BS and there's great things, right? So let's talk about the things that we did not like, the things that maybe could have gone better. We wish they had gone better. Let's get those written out and, and the feelings that come up with it, whether it's I healed through that. I feel good about that. I've let that go or it's it still frustrates me. It's still here. Here's what bothered me about it, whatever. Talk about the good things. Talk about the things that worked. Talk about the seeds that you sowed that you hope to see come to fruition in the spring as we move into this new season. The things you want to let go of, the things you want to bring into uh, reality into fruition let's write it all down let's get it all out let's cry if we need to release 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 it get it all down on paper i know a lot of people say like burn things up rip things up throw them out do that if you feel comfortable for me i sometimes like keeping those things because i like to look at look back at what i was working on at a certain time i like to look back at what you know what i've grown through and where i was then and where i am now so i don't always rip things up and throw them away but you do what you need to do because i think i think that's a spiritual practice for some people some people for some people ripping things up and burning them up feels like a release for them it doesn't always feel that way for me you know I would suggest doing what you feel most comfortable with. At the end of this, whether you wanna do that or you wanna just leave it and walk away and take a moment, drink some water, and you've just released a lot of energy writing all this stuff out. I'm gonna get into what I do to cleanse myself spiritually and what feels good for me, but this is where you can take it or you can leave it, and that's it. It's all respect, right? Saging saging my home and saging my aura i'm a true believer that the intention that you have is what brings life to anything and it is a symbol of just cleansing for me refreshing and restarting and clearing out making space for more goodness to flow in it also literally cleans the air so it is something that i try to do weekly i haven't had to do much lately because i've been feeling really great it's just been feeling really good right now and calm but when i feel a little stagnant and i feel the air is a little bit thick i open up my windows I open up my doors and I sage throughout the house of course if I'm gonna do that on a regular basis during my spring cleansing is just opening up all the doors and even when it's cold outside just cleansing and setting my intention so for me that looks like I'm releasing anything that no longer belongs that is always my favorite line anything that no longer belongs habits thoughts people opportunities anything that no longer belongs God release it. I surrender it and I may not even know what it is, but I'm asking you that what no longer is aligned to peacefully let it go. And then I speak that all good opportunity and the things that are aligned, the things that are necessary right now to get to the next part of my journey and the things that I am bringing into fruition, the things that I am manifesting right now, I ask that what needs to be here for those things, what resources, what people, what ideas, the creativity and the beliefs and the habits, I ask that they come. I ask that it flows. I ask that it be made known to me, the things I need to work on. I speak all the things that I'm setting the intention for. So for me, this spring, it's really just planting my feet a little bit deeper in learning myself, continuing to say no to anything that I have to question. I want full body yeses. I want 
I just want to be more me and I want to continue to grow in my entrepreneurial journey and I want to you know continue to move forward with the foundation for my family and the generations to come like these are the things that I, I'm speaking on right now and anything that's in the way of that anything that doesn't support that that takes my attention away from that release and then I like to use some Palo Santo to kind of refill the space with good energy, feed good energy into those good things that I just spoke and the things that I want to continue to expand and to grow. Let me just say you can do all these things and have negative intentions. You can do all these things and have no intentions. Just like the same thing with a prayer. You can say any prayer you want and your prayer can be asking for someone's downfall, right? So the intention with which you say the prayer, the intention with which you use your sage or you release things or you call things in, that is what matters most. You are the person in your life that is responsible for the energy that you're putting out and the intentions that you are setting for yourself. You know when you're setting things with pure intention and with good intention and you know when you're not in the best space right so make decisions for yourself i never want you following my videos just because i did it do your research feel good about anything that you decide to do or anything you decide to walk away with truly understand it for yourself and have your own understanding that is the thing that i wish someone told me in the beginning you don't have to follow anybody step by step people are coming from their own perspectives right people are setting their own intentions and sometimes you never know what someone's intention is so you have to be really clear in yourself for the things you're doing in your world the rituals you decide to take on the religion you decide to take on your spiritual practices your prayers your manifestations it should be sacred to you i want to share what i do it gives you some ideas and i also want to share my perspective to know that it is light and it is beautiful and i enjoy it and it just magnifies goodness in my world now my last thing and my favorite thing, and this is what I started last year when I was in this slump. So there's a wellness teacher, a meditation teacher. I don't know what she calls herself officially. Her name is Debbie Brown. I first found her because my best friend sent me an interview she did on The Breakfast Club and I just love her aura. So as I'm listening to her podcast, she talked about taking a spiritual bath. And what she does is she pours an entire bag of Epsom salt in her bath i had to look this up and make sure it wasn't bad for my pipes epsom salt it's not like coconut oil it doesn't like harden back up when it's cold or anything once it dissolves into the water it dissolves right she has a whole bag of epsom salt now you can just do that some baths i just needed that to just relax my body you can also add baking soda you can add um some bentonite clay and these are ways to pull like toxins out of your body and to really relax you. I love to add some essential oils, just a few drops. So if it's just a relaxing bath, some lavender and some vanilla. If it is a more energizing bath, some orange oil and some vanilla. And then I like to have my crystals and just set intentions. And sometimes I pour myself a glass of wine, depending on what the occasion is. For like a spring cleansing bath, I would say do pink Himalayan salt in your water, which is supposed to hydrate you more. And then I like to light some candles, turn the lights out um she suggests that you make the water as hot as you can stand it you know you don't want to be you don't want to be uncomfortable but as as warm as you can stand it those baths i used to feel my body tingling as i was in the bath and then i used to feel just so relaxed i would do it right before bed and i would sleep so good again this is after you have journaled you've let it go you've cleaned your home already you've cleaned your energy and your aura now you are taking this bath and you are like physically just cleansing yourself and thinking of the idea of starting anew and welcoming in the new and thinking of it literally washing off of you the things the habits the energy that no longer belongs that you no longer want going into this season with you just mentally letting it all go physically letting it all go spiritually letting it go thinking of this as your renewal for a second as your renewal for this for this season the biggest thing with this cleansing and letting go is that in your mind you are telling yourself that you are releasing that you are releasing the old and making space for the new you are releasing the baggage and the energy and the thoughts and the habits you are releasing it all and you are welcoming in all the beautiful things that you have been speaking into existence that you have been praying for that you have been writing down and hoping for and mood boarding and visualizing and vision boarding and these routines just help you to physically have something to hold on to to get rid of the energy and things that no longer belong now i'm a little late right about a month we're about a month behind the first day of spring and that's fine that is perfectly fine because that's life as a content creator i feel like every content creator is always right on time and it's like the spring video comes right on the day of spring i'm not your average content creator i am 
going to give you the content when I feel that it is necessary. And right now, in the middle of April, you still have the opportunity. Just because you didn't do it at the beginning of March on the first day of spring does not mean you can't do it right now. You can do it right now. Take your time and release. And take your time and really think about what it is you're releasing. And get clear on it and feel good about it. And then begin your process. And implement your own things that you already had in place. Maybe it's the cleaning products that you use when you feel good about the spring and when you're cleaning. Implement that into it. I want you to take what works, take what works for you, what resonates with you, and leave what doesn't. Create your own reset rituals. Create your own reset schedules that feel good for you. I always say, if that looks like a day of nothing, a day of on the couch and just watching television or whatever you decide to do, then let that be. Whatever feels good for you as far as a reset, just make it something that is energetically and spiritually aligned with you and what you believe in. You know, do the work of letting go of anything that is no longer bringing you joy and serving purpose. People, things, habits, beliefs, mindsets, clothes, let it go. Let it go and make space for what you are calling forward, okay? And so I hope that you love this video. I hope that it opened your eyes to something new or maybe something you want to start. Or maybe this whole thing is just like, what? People do this in the spring at all? <laughs> maybe you take the whole thing. Maybe you take one part. But I hope that you walk away with something. I hope that you walk away feeling a little bit lighter. Let me know in the comments, please, what spring cleansing routines do you have? Which things you took from this video? What things you want to add? If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe and that you turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos. And until next time, keep living in love, in light, and in your truth. Mwah. Bye.